So welcome everyone to our Zero Waste 101 workshop. Our intention today is um, to inspire you on how to live a life that is closer to zero waste lifestyle. And uh, today, Barbara and me, we will lead this workshop and we will guide you through some information on zero waste. And uh, this should not be um, a monologue from us to you, but um, it's more an interactive session. So we invite you um, to also uh, raise your voice and to participate. We have some interactive um, slides within our presentation that uh, will hopefully engage all of you to take part in this workshop and really take something home with you. But we, before we start, I would like to do a short introduction and um, maybe Barbara, you start with introducing yourself. Maybe you can tell us one, two sentences about yourself. Sure, so hi everyone. I'm uh, Barbara, based in Barcelona. Uh, I'm uh, originally from France, but I've been here for six years now. And um, I've been involved in the zero waste um, movement or activity, let's say, for several years. I'm actually the founder of WeZero, that is an uh, online zero waste shop based in, in Barcelona. So really looking forward to this session today with everyone. Cool. Um, Barbara and I, we have joined forces since we have uh, quite some similarity. And uh, yeah, we now uh, work together on this workshop and uh, we're looking forward for some um, projects in, in future. And then I'll say a few sentences about myself. So I see still people are joining. Welcome everyone. Welcome to our Zero Waste 101 workshop. Um, my name is Stephanie and I'm the co-founder of Vivo Zero, a zero waste consultancy based in Amsterdam. And our mission is to make it easy for people to go zero waste. And one of the ways we do that is with workshops like these today um, and this should be like a very uh, short introduction to a zero waste lifestyle and that um, should hopefully inspire you to um, yeah to change eventually some habits and uh, move towards greener practices. As I already said uh, we welcome you to explore your zero waste potential today with us. And um, before we do that, I would like to have a quick look on our program, on our agenda for today. So um, before we start, I would like to ask you to have your smartphone ready with a QR scanner, hopefully. If not, then just um, let us know in the chat and uh, I can send a link. And uh, best would be if you have a piece of paper and pen or a notebook, where you can note something down. So what is the agenda for today? Uh, first, we will answer the question, what is zero waste actually? Then um, all together, we will define the five principles of uh, zero waste and um, see how we can put zero waste into practice. And after that, um, there is a section where you can download the key takeaways of today's session. And then in the end, there's some time for Q and A. We have about, um, I guess now 50 minutes uh, for our workshop. And uh, yeah, we're very happy to have you all here. We already have seen that some of you are from Austria, some are from Barcelona and um, <laughs> That's not a surprise because I'm from Austria and Barbara is from USA Barcelona, so. as well. Great. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Cool. Yeah. Some diversity. Ah, two USA. Wow. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Welcome, job, everyone. Great. All right. Um, then I would say, Barbara, the stage is yours. Let's yeah. See, um, what zero waste is. Great. So yeah, indeed, before we provide a sort of what is the formal definition of zero waste, the accepted one, 
um, it would be great to understand what you think zero waste is or even what how you see it. So by scanning the QR code that's on the slides, you will access um, Menti uh, tool where you'll be able to type in um, type in your definition of zero waste and it will appear in this sort of cloud of words. So um, if you're able to please scan the QR code in case there's any issue, let us know. I'm like seeing the chat right now. Um, and, and below you can also note the, the direct uh, address in case the QR doesn't work for you. See, we, has everyone scanned yet? Maybe you can give it a few seconds and then move to the other page. Okay, let's maybe, I will just type in the, the address in case in the chat and then um, we can maybe move to the, the page. Let's see what you're okay. for you. We Let's have see quite what some we see. words here in our word cloud already. Great. Environmental so, clean, recycling, no packaging, better food production. Sounds great. Reusability, yes, eco consciousness. Sustainability, zero carbon waste, yes. Uh, these are all great input. Thank you for that. Um, I think Irene, I see someone. Irene, uh, maybe I will mute you if you if it's possible, or maybe uh, if everyone can ensure they are mute, so there's no additional <laughs> noise. Would be great. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much for your inputs. Yeah, that sounds very uh, like you're all quite aware already. So that's great to see. Nothing in the trash. Yes. Okay. So um, there's been actually a formal definition of zero waste um, that's been made by the Zero Waste International Alliance. And it is a bit of a complex one, but it's good to know what, what the, the actual meaning. So um, zero waste is the conservation of all resources by means of responsible production consumption, reuse and recovery of products, packaging and materials without burning and with no dis discharges to land, water or air that threaten the environment or human health. It is quite long. <laughs> so um, I think the key for us, for uh, humans, <laughs> maybe for everyone to, to go by a principle and, and to really uh, getting some zero waste habit is is to have your own definition of it no and to yeah to embody it so for me i would say zero waste is basically to send no waste to nature whether it's land or air or anything uh it's also pursuing a lifestyle that is not harmful for the environment nor for human health um and indeed there are several pioneers that have like paved the way um to for other people to to have a better understanding to have examples um to go by uh which which can really be an inspiration and um the the basic there's a basic framework or model let's say to go by the zero waste principle that is called the five r's it used to be the three r's but it's actually the five r's so we will look into this now um, the question is, that's your next activity. Do you all know what the five R's are? are? And um, could everyone that is in uh, the call please type in the chat what you think the five R's are? We know we're on the computer, but please don't cheat. So it's not funny. Uh, <laughs> um, if you please type in the chat. Uh, what, if you have only three or four, that's already good. Go ahead. Let's see if some have them all. Don't see yet in the chat if there's some um, some suggestions. Let's see. Let me give you some time. Oh, 
quite good. Yes, thank you, Jane. Reuse, reduce, recycled, refuse. And I don't know. Yes, that's usually <laughs> reduce, reuse, recycle. Very good. Thank you. Let's see if there's any more suggestion. Okay, I don't renovate. Ah, <laughs> almost. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so we will now go into the these five R's. So what are the five R's? We have um, refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. So there's been some really good guesses already in the chat. Rot is, um, yeah, go ahead, Stephanie, if you want to take it from here. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah, rot is absolutely my favorite topic. So, but we will come to the topic of rot at the end of our presentation. So, um, as Barbara already said, uh, we are now entering the funnel of zero waste of um, the five R's. And um, on the right, you also see that funnel. And we will start with the R that we should use the most. And this is refuse. So refuse would be on top, then reduce, reuse, recycle, and um, at the very bottom you have rot. And uh, we will see how all of those principles um, will help us to simplify our life and to move towards more sustainable practices. So um, what is the purpose of this first R? It is waste prevention and it is understanding what you really need. There are there someone else still coming. Um, so it's basically I think Stephanie might have, are you all hearing Stephanie or am I? No, huh? okay. Stephanie, Thank you have you. some connection issues maybe? Oh. It's yes, cutting it, out at some point. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just said, uh, my apologies. It just said now it's, um, now it's internet good. connection is unstable. Okay, okay. let's hope uh, <laughs> Fingers crossed. It, it will be fine. Otherwise you're here as a backup, so that's great. Okay, so um, yeah, see, seeing the impact of saying no, but often it is very inconvenient to say no because often you would connect this to um, like uh, hurting someone or um, like somehow making someone else uncomfortable. And to avoid that, I have a little assignment for you. So we will now all together choose our refuse mantra. So now you can take your uh, piece of paper and pen um, or your notebook and then um, write down a sentence that you feel comfortable with when refusing, for example, single use plastic or um, a plastic bag. So you can write a sentence that you feel well with. For example, no, thank you. I try to live more sustainable or something more fancy like, um, no, thanks. My body is a temple. I don't consume microplastic. So you can uh, choose whatever mantra um, you would like to repeat over and over again when it comes to refusing single-use plastic or packaging and um, yeah best is if you write it down think about it for a minute and imagine a situation where you would have liked to say no to single-use plastic but you didn't do it because it didn't feel so good or it was just not convenient to say no and then you just took the plastic bag although you actually didn't want it. So 
So think back of, I think all of us had that situation already where we thought, hmm, actually I, I would not have needed that bag or uh, this item. So think back of a situation where you were in that uncomfortable feeling and um, resolve it with a refuse mantra that you write down. And if someone of you is a very extrovert and wants to share, that would be even better so we can get inspired from each other. Someone wants to share their refuse mantra. If not, it's also okay. I say, I prefer to find an alternative to plastic. Yeah, that's nice. And um, no, thank you. I don't think it's necessary for me. Great. And sometimes you will meet um, irritated people, but I think this ir irritation is the first step to a behavioral mindset change. And this is what we want to achieve. And this is actually also the only thing we need to do when we move towards zero waste practices. It's uh, purely a mindset change. And um, this way you can also inspire others. And um, I think irritation increases awareness too. Exactly, I totally agree. I like to have that opportunity to make people think about it. Yeah, you have so much power in your hands, really. It's uh, amazing. Um, and it's, okay. all about, it's all about the tone because if you're really nice and you just say, okay, I think it's not necessary for me. I understand it's not easy to change, but I encourage you and so on. It's always, there's always a nice way to say things. <laughs> Exactly. And uh, yeah, so pay attention to keep refusing. I know it's easy to just uh, let, it, let go of um, good habits that you want to um, establish. Maybe it's a bit hard in the beginning, but um, yeah, <laughs> as I wrote here, soon you will harvest the sweet sustainability fruit. And um, yeah, I, it's, for me, it was always a good feeling to also uh, make other people aware. And as I already said, it's all about creating positive ripple effects and it doesn't matter how small they are, they can grow huge. All right, um, if there are no more refuse mantras for now, uh, we'll go on to the next slide. And Barbara and I, we chose five cities this time to inspire you also with local initiatives around uh, the, five R, the five R's. And uh, here we have in Vienna, um, our general in Austria, the initiative Zero Waste Austria. They are generally involved in zero waste practices. In Barcelona, we have Vivir Sin Plastico and Zero Waste Barcelona, I guess that's, um, yeah quite the same, like a general zero waste community. Plastico Rio in Athens, uh, that's the first zero waste store in Athens. And they also, they are building a community around zero waste and offering workshops. In Amsterdam, we have Plastic Whale. They are uh, collecting tons of plastic from the canals. And uh, we go zero, of course, <laughs> our zero waste consultancy. And um, Berlin, we have Original Unverpackt, and, uh, and Freya, so Original Unverpackt is also the first zero waste store in Berlin, and Freya is the first zero waste um, restaurant, interestingly, in Berlin. Um, okay, let's skip this horrible picture of this man and let's go into the next R. Right, so the next R in the zero waste funnel is reduce, reduce to the essential. So reduce can often be associated to minimalism, let's say, living with less and, and you, re you soon realize, oh, I don't really need some of these things. So the typical example is just owning less clothes. Um, here it's not, for example, uh, buying them secondhand, it's really just owning less. And um, you know, example is maybe having less, yeah, less shoes, less cosmetics, things like that. 
Um, so just reduce the consumption habits and the good news is also good for your wallet. So <laughs> um, now uh, it also applies to electronic gadgets. For example, we tend to accumulate a lot of electronic things in our home that we not necessarily need. Now uh, your next um, task, if you would like, would be to go um, in your room or in your home and find an object that you realize you don't really use anymore, you don't really need, and that you are ready to give away. So we would like for everyone to uh, stand up, go in the room, and ideally show to the camera um, the object that they've picked, whether it's, yeah, um, an, an item that, that you, you feel you're ready to give away. Um, if you're fine with that, just go ahead and, and we can see that in a couple of minutes. Oh, okay, Jane, no worries. <laughs> That's great. That's a great example. Yes. Jane says, I'm at work right now, but I just donated a car full this weekend. So. <laughs> Jane, I'm, I'm going to do the, uh, the same thing next week. So uh, my van is still full of clothes. Like I, I went to my family's home um, and I decided to donate 80% of my clothes. So uh, <laughs> I have the same situation, but I haven't donated it yet. So there's still some uh, work to be done. Yeah, moving really helps to tune down on buying things. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Irene, as well. It's like always accumulating that, okay, I'm going to give this and this and that. And <laughs> Anybody want to share on the camera what they are? Uh, we see Fabian. Thank you. What is this? Is it a popcorn machine? Yeah, of course. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well done. Great. Well, thank you for that. Um, now, in each city, there are some reduced uh, heroes. Um, some are indeed the, some, some flea markets. So in Vienna, the flow market, um, Nash Markt, um, as well flea markets as well are Varvakios, uh, I guess, in, in Athens and the Hallen in Amsterdam, as well as Hallen Flohmarkt in Berlin. And in Barcelona, there's We Zero, of course, Zero, Zero Waste Online Shop and Espigoladors. I really like this company in Barcelona because they actually, um, instead of using, let's say, yeah, they, they are uh, producing uh, food products based on, on vegetables that have been discarded from the normal circuit just because they look ugly, which is not really relevant for food, is it? So uh, that's that's one inspiration for sure. Yeah, and you feel lighter, exactly, yeah. <laughs> right, thank you, thank you. So now we, we'll move to the next R, maybe? Yes, and um, the next R is reuse what you have. So what is the purpose of reusing? Why should we do that? Uh, first of all, you can reuse the previous principles over and over again, since um, refusing and reducing are the principles we should use the most often. Um, but you can also give items or materials a different uh, purpose. Upcycling is also one way of reusing. Who of you has upcycled something before? Any item that uh, I always say, like um, material without identity is waste. So if we turn it around, material with identity is not waste anymore. Um, and with upcycling, we can breathe new life into old items that we don't use anymore. 
Okay, so Jane wrote um, me, I turned an old TV into a cat bed house for my best friend. How amazing is that? What a nice story as well. Really cool. Okay. Um, uh, no worries, Sarah. Uh, very nice to have had you here. So um, we will publish this workshop also on YouTube and send it out to you once I have edited. So I also see at home we have groceries ba bags made of old shirts. That's also a lovely idea. Okay, and um, yeah, so. I reused the glass containers from supermarket as lunch boxes. Great ideas. So there's so much you can do. And I always say also our grandmas, they were upcyclers uh, when, or at least in my generation. So um, during war, there were not so many resources and often um, upcycling was the only option option and all of a sudden your old door was a new um, dining table and there are so many um, solutions out there and so many inspirations on YouTube and uh, all kinds of channels that you can look up. Okay let's go to our assignment for this R. So um, now we need a pen and paper again. Find an alternative to free items that you can replace with reusables or more sustainable options. So um, think of items that you use daily, like your razor or um, a bottle that you drink out of um, or um, any kind of material that you use on a daily basis that is not really sustainable. And uh, mostly we're talking about plastic. So Please write down three items. If you want to make it easy for yourself, then think of three plastic items that you want to replace with reusables. Or maybe there is an item that you would like to replace, but you cannot think of any reusable option, then please let us know. You can also always unmute yourself um, or type in the chat. If someone wants to share an item, that you could replace with a reusable one. Okay, use solid soap or shampoo. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. For example, shampoo bottles is one of those examples that are mostly stored in plastic bottles. If you use shampoo bars, you avoid those plastic bottles. I've always wanted to try those, yeah. <laughs> nice, Jane. Okay. Um, anyone wants to share an item that they would like to replace with a more sustainable option? For this principle, we need to pay attention um, by just thinking of alternatives. So again, it's all about awareness. Okay, Claire, I feel terrible saying this, but plastic to cover leftover food and bowls. I've tried to reusable ones, but not always the best. Any ideas? Um, yes, so I've experienced the same and I have a quite simple solution. Instead of um, plastic to cover or reusable um, options, you can just put a plate on top of a bowl and it works perfectly fine. Um, okay, buying my dog treats in bulk with reusable containers instead of buying in boxes, bags. Mm -hmm. Very nice. That's, a, that's good if you have a shop where you can buy um, dog food in bulk, that's great. Okay, um, yeah, I think we have some reuse inspiration here already. Thanks everyone for contributing. Um, now again, reuse in your city. So my apologies for the US and uh, UK based people. We don't have you on the map today, but eventually you visit one of those cities soon. Uh, so in Vienna, it's um, the 48 Tandler reuse shop. 
that you can uh, visit. Um, in Barcelona, you will find infinite denim. I don't know what these it is are. Probably. This is an, an upcycling example. It's a company that uses all a uh, pair of jeans to make uh, handbags and other accessories. Nice. Um, in Athens, we have three quarters. They make um, beautiful bags out of old sunsets. And Babylon Gardens, they build uh, walls um, from from plastic bottles and they plant plants into those plastic bottles and then uh, Amsterdam with zero box it's a product line for do-it-yourself zero waste products and in Berlin we have also a reuse shop all right I think we can go to the next hour, Barbara. Right we are going down in the funnel and it's now on to recycle Recycle is often the most well-known R of the five, but really when we enter the zero waste, we want to go with uh, implementing zero waste habits. We, we should really see recycle as one of the last recourse, the last recourse uh, for some items. So um, the reason for that is that unfortunately, not all materials are recyclable and especially the ones that may there's also some items that we think are recyclable and are not. Um, I have the example in Spain where if 25% um, only of the plastic that is thrown in the recyclable bin is actually recycled. And there's various reasons for that. It can be a little bit tricky to know them all, but think that um, as a baseline, uh, some materials are just too expensive to recycle. That's <laughs> basically the baseline. Um, so, yeah, that's why refusing, reusing, reducing are always a better option than recycle. But we can't, we can't, of course, um, do that for everything. So when you have to recycle something, um, make sure that you know your local regulations. We will have, we will try to give you some tips as well, um, but it's different from a country to another and um, recognize the materials. So it's really worth having a look at this little triangle below the plastic bottles to understand what plastic type they are and whether it's actually recyclable in your city or town or, <laughs> yeah. Um, now, your next assignment would be actually two assignments, <laughs> if, you, if you agree with them. Uh, first one would be to think of maybe a company or an entity around you, if you have kids, maybe your kid's school or the company you work in or something where you feel you would want to positively influence them to say, okay, this, I think they could do better. They could recycle more or something um, and, and, and think about it. And uh, through the takeaways uh, later, Stephanie will provide some examples of how you can um, address this company and, and suggest some improvements there. Um, does everyone have an entity in mind, a company or else? If you want to comment in the chat, that's completely fine also to say if it's a school, if it's like a, the company you work in, if it's, yeah, the comp somewhere where you do your groceries. Well, <laughs> as long as you have it on your no notebook for later, that's the important part. And then um, refurbish medical imaging equipment. Yeah, so that's quite technical as well. So it must be a lot of electronics and so on. Yeah, okay, nice. Um, and the other thing is on the personal side of zero waste, the school indeed, yes. Absolutely, to influence young people is 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 key and also by if the school is um, conscious about it, it can impact a lot of people at once already, like the different families, for sure, for sure. Um, nice, thank you. So um, then another thing you might want to do on a more, um, in, in your home is to review your trash. Yes, children have influence on parents, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so when we, when we throw things in the garbage, we were like, okay, this is garbage now, we don't look at it. But actually, going into zero waste is quite interesting to look at the trash and consider it. So 
do you have a bigger amount of things in the recycling part or in the in the part that would end up going to landfill in the compostable part because um the way um humans uh consume and eat normally a big part of your waste should be compostable for example we'll talk about this later but it's key to, to also, maybe if you review your trash, you're going to say, okay, this item, is it really recyclable? Let's review which, which type of plastic is it? Oh, or for example, I tend to throw this in the general bin because for example, there's this sort of a plastic thing, there's a film on top and there's a transparent uh, box at the bottom. The film might not be recyclable, but maybe the bottom part is. So what if you just start, for example, it's an example, remove the film, film goes into the generic trash, but you can start recycling the other part. So if you want after the this discussion to um, go and have a look at your own, own trash and, and um, focus on separating the items correctly, sorting them, um, that's really a, a good place to start as well. And so um, here are some of the recycling entities in, in your cities. So Verpackungsfreie mit Zukunft in Vienna, Aglaya that recycles um, polyester uh, yarn in, um, sorry, fabric, uh, fabric yeah, in, in Barcelona, Fresco in Athens, Symphony in Amsterdam, and Alba Group in Berlin, some examples there. And now we'll go to Stephanie's favorite R. <laughs> yes, and I already saw that uh, Jane uh, texted in the chat that she has a uh, compost in her home already. And now most of you might think um, living in a two room apartment, where should I compost? That's not really feasible for me. And I will tell you, yes, it is. So there is um, a composting method called bukashi composting. It's an old Japanese form of fermenting food waste. And um, how does this work? Uh, you can buy a bukashi compost simply online. It's um, usually, usually it comes in two plastic buckets. Unfortunately, plastic, but you're doing something good with it and you should uh, be able to keep it for a long time um, and you will throw your organic waste into this plastic bu uh, bucket and then uh, put a little bit of so-called bukashi bran on top of it and bukashi bran is any kind of matter so it could be like little pieces of wood or um, even leaves you can also buy bukashi bran but you can also just get it from outside from nature and mix it with a certain lactobacillus that will make your food waste um, ferment. So if you start mostly there's a Bokashi brand um, coming with the, with the buckets. Uh, two Bokashi buckets cost around 50 euro, but it's really an investment for a lifetime. And it also contains the Bokashi brand. And then um, once you threw your organic waste and you put the Bokashi brand on top, uh, you do another layer of organic waste, another layer of Bokashi brand, and you're kind of building a waste cake, I would call it, <laughs> until the bucket is full. And um, this is not just a simple bucket, but there is also on the very bottom um, a layer that has holes in it and that allows to that allows the liquid to drip through it and accumulate at the bottom of the bucket. And um, then in front you have a lid that you can open. And once you open it, you're own produced fertilizer is coming fresh from, from the Bokashi bin and you can use it to fertilize your herbs or if you have any plants, um, just dilute it with a bit of water and give it as, as a like plant food to your plants and they will be very happy about it. And the rest, um, the Bokashi, the Bokashi, um, organic waste mix with uh, the bran, you can either use as soil amendment, 
So um, if you have a place where you plant things, maybe on your balcony, you can bury this soil amendment um, next to your crops and they will be um, growing much better. Or, and this is um, the option that we would recommend, you find uh, your community of Bukashi composters in almost every European city or actually global, there are Bukashi communities where you can just uh, bring the compost to and um, be part of a community of mostly urban farmers. And uh, here is where the whole food waste cycle closes. And uh, that's why it's also like, for me, the core of zero waste, because you understand the full life cycle of a product. Um, and so you can bring your Bokashi compost there. And uh, at the same time, you will be able to um, harvest fruits or vegetables that were fertilized with your own fertilizer and with your own uh, composting waste. And um, that's why here we would encourage you to, first of all, follow the life cycle of one product that you consume daily. And I would like you to think of one product that you eat or drink on a daily basis right now and to think about the whole life cycle of this product. Choose one product, maybe it's an apple, maybe it's spaghetti, maybe it's a special made curry that is pre-cooked, then it's going to be uh, a bit complicated <laughs> to think about it. But um, yeah, so see which product um, you eat on a daily basis. And if you can track back or trace the, the life cycle of this product. And if this uh, makes you feel like, oh no, I have no idea where my food is coming from, then uh, I would recommend that you could Google and um, involve in your local composting community to really get back to the origin of, of where your food comes from and even, um, yeah, be part of it um, by bringing your compost there and uh, involve in a composting community. Has someone heard of Bukashi composting before? Does any of the things I just said make sense? How do you feel about it? Yeah, Jane heard about it. Beatrice, not. She loves it. Great. Me too. Once you start it, uh, you don't want to stop. Makes sense. Okay. If you have any questions or if there was something not clear, just uh, raise your hand or ask in the chat. We also have uh, articles on Bokashi composting in our blog. So if you go to wecozero.co and uh, check out our blog, just type in the word Bokashi. Bokashi, by the way, I type in the word Bokashi now in the chat. So you know how to write it. Okay, um, then here our, your last assignment would be to involve in your local composting community. This might sound extreme to uh, some of you, but maybe, maybe just uh, pass by once. There are so many communities who, in, um, who, who support composting and um, it's a great way of starting to live more sustainable. Okay, what do we have to pay um, attention to? Um, yeah, there's one, one sentence here. What are the products you buy designed for? So yeah, also ask, ask that question um, to yourself. What are the products that you consume made for? Often um, products, um, accelerate uh, addictional behavior. So this is what most of us would like to avoid. And maybe this question helps you to, um, yeah, think of what does your body good, what makes you feel healthy and how can you live a more sustainable life? Thanks Barbara for sharing. 
Um, okay, so rotting is the last R. We've been, we started with refusing, reducing, reusing, recycling, and rot. We went all the way down uh, to the bottom of our zero waste um, funnel. You made it, congrats. Uh, you also made it through all our assignments. I'm sure some of them were not that easy. Thanks for participating and uh, also sharing your thoughts. And uh, oh, we have here one more section left um, before we slowly move towards the Q&A and takeaways. Uh, Rotten your city. So um, Vienna, gratis compost, Barcelona, Abono, Kilometer zero, Athens, Compostina, uh, Amsterdam, I can change the world with my two hands. Yes, also the website is called like that. So you have a lot to type in if you're there. Uh, and Berlin, Prinzessin and Garten is a park. You can also, the most simple thing, the way of actually composting is just go to your park and bury your waste. <laughs> like, you, I mean, you don't have to dig or so, but you mostly there is some space in the park where you could just uh, leave your organic waste and it won't be harmful unless you really um, make sure that it's only organic waste. And uh, yeah, so now that we hopefully inspired you with some zero waste uh, practices, we summarized some of the key takeaways and also some templates for, for example, for the letter that Barbara mentioned, where you can influence a company that you would like to see more sustainable. Um, this is your knowledge base. You can uh, look at some swap lists, I think, that we provided there and uh, just scan it with your QR code and um, you will be able to see some more information on the topic. And for those who wonder why there is a why there is tea and cake, uh, once in a workshop I said, uh, and these are your tea cake aways. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously I was thinking about tea and cake in the afternoon, and I do again. <laughs> okay, um, good. I hope everyone scanned the QR code in case uh, you haven't done it yet or you have any questions, I will also post our email address into the chat and you can reach out anytime. Okay. And uh, just to close this session, um, this is in case indeed influencing companies around you and so on. We, for companies um, who want to go a step further, and uh, be active into reducing their waste, but maybe not know where to start. Uh, we offer a zero waste audit service. So it aims at reporting what is the current waste um, and providing recommendations for circular practices. So um, the objective is to have a landfill conversion rate of uh, diversion rate of 90%, which means that only 10% uh, of the waste produce will go to landfill. Um, and then uh, the little numbers you can see would be the final results, results after implementing the recommendations for um, from the zeros audit, which means 9%, for example, going to landfill, the majority being recycled and around 30% of the waste being composted. So um, if you work um, in a company that has offices that could uh, beneficiate from this, do not hesitate to reach out. Um, and this service is available um, all across Europe now, all of the uh, main cities in Europe. So that's, um, yeah, so that's it. Again, you can use the same email that Stephanie provided to, to reach out about this. Um, anything else you want to add, Stephanie? Um, no, you summarized it perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, I think um, we have now six minutes uh, for Q&A. So now it's time to challenge us since we challenged you. Um, 
ask us anything that comes to your mind and uh, we will see or we will do our best to to answer in the um what would you say to people way. who are advocating single-use products due to fear of transmission of COVID? That's a very good question, indeed. Um, I would say uh, it depends very much on the area of application. For example, hospitals are a place where there's a lot of waste, but it's obviously very hard because it relates a lot to health and risk. Um, but uh, COVID is, is an example where there's been a lot of unnecessary uh, plastic indeed, because so long as people wash their hands and um, the, the, it's information as well. So I think I'm not a COVID expert, so I'm not gonna <laughs> pretend like I know a huge amount, but um, it's all about making sure what surfaces are transmittable or not and implementing some good practices of before you pick up a cup, wash your hands, and then you put it in the dishwasher or you wash it by hand. And um, simply soap is very efficient at getting rid of COVID. So um, that's, yeah, that's a simple, but I would say instead of thinking of wrapping things and, and, and throwing them away, just more um, clean practices, yeah, <laughs> cleaning practices. Yeah, and I can also give an uh, example from practice, so um, volunteering for Amsterdam's first zero waste uh, grocery store. And uh, what they do is also since the beginning of the pandemic, same as Barbara said, they're asking every client to wash their hands um, before they shop. And I think this is uh, indeed the most efficient way of uh, avoiding to transmit uh, the COVID virus uh, in a public area. And um, yeah, of course, wearing masks, um, reusable ones. Uh, I, I don't see the point why single use masks would be better than reusable ones if you have uh, a few and you can wash them. So in some countries it's forbidden. Uh, for example, in the Netherlands is allowed to use um, reusable masks. This is something you can do and yeah, so so I would also definitely say soap and reusable masks. That should be uh, fine. There's a very good question from Beatrice. There is not a green point in my country, county or county or country, I'm not sure. What can I do with waste cooking olive oil? Can I bury it in my garden? So for olive oil, um, First of all, you could also compost it with bukashi. So bukashi is really a transformator. You can even compost meat or cheese, uh, really like heavy stuff. So you could also, if, if it's not too much, uh, you could use it there. Um, or find a, a recipe of uh, producing uh, soap with olive oil. Uh, maybe you can mix it with some uh, soap flakes or um, beeswax and then just uh, melt it and uh, make your own soap that you can use again for cleaning. You can just have a bucket with warm water and grate it into um, the warm water and then you have uh, something to clean. And again, your waste has a meaning again with a different identity. Um, and then the next question from Irene, you said that only a percent of what's in the recycling bins is recycled, how we can know the materials that actually are recyclable in each city. So I'm um, for Barcelona, at least I'm going to um, share with you right now through the chat an article that uh, we published in with zero about the different types of plastics that are recyclable or not. Um, it is it is um, not to, to know all the rules. Uh, there is certain plastics. So for example, in Spain, there's this silly thing that in theory, the plastic that you throw away should be a packaging for it to be recycled. So for example, if you throw away a kid's toy that's made of plastic, in theory, it would not be recycled because it's not a packaging, which I found very weird. Um, but um, the key to knowing more about what's recyclable and not as a general rule, um, 
glass recycles very well, as well as aluminum. So if you want to use more recyclable materials, these are the materials to go for. Then there's all the consideration of carbon footprint, but that's a different topic. And then within plastics, um, the key is to check in your packaging, you would always have, yeah, almost always have a little triangle with a number inside, and that tells you the plastic type that it is. And then you can check um, recycling rules of your city, and they will probably detail these types of plastics based on the little numbers in the triangles. All right. Um... We're running out of time. We're at the end of our workshop. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, participating and being so active. And um, yeah, also uh, to inspire each other. We're also learning a lot from you. It's not just that we are sharing our knowledge, but uh, also your questions and your input is uh, immensely valuable to us. So um, thank you very much. Thanks to everyone. And, Thank you for your um, comments. Great. We're happy that, that it was useful to you. Exactly. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you in one of our next workshops. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime and um, have a lovely evening. Wherever you are right now, maybe it's not evening. Maybe you. have a good day for some of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think so too. Yeah, thank you. And don't hesitate to reach out. Our last message for uh, today, nature does not hurry yet everything is accomplished. <laughs>